Welcome to Unhinged Space, Episode 8, Bigelow Aerospace. I'm your host, Timothy Albies. Let's get into it. While chatting recently on the Angry Astronaut Discord with member Collapsar X, I was inspired to do another episode on inflatable habitats. I think Collapsar X and many others would like more content like this, so I'll make it manifest. Entrepreneur Robert T. Bigelow is a former founder and president of Bigelow Aerospace LLC. It was headquartered in Las Vegas, Nevada. Bigelow Aerospace combines contracting, research and development aimed upon achieving economic breakthrough with habitats for private or government organisations. Since 1999, Mr. Bigelow had personally contributed all financial support totaling over 350 million US dollars to date. Furthermore, also provided the daily strategic leadership at Bigelow Aerospace in its design, development and testing of expendable habitat architecture. Bigelow Aerospace employed approximately 150 employees at its Las Vegas facility. Mr Bigelow had successfully launched two subscale spacecraft called Genesis 1 and 2 into orbit as well as the Bigelow Expendable Activity Module or BEAM which is attached to the Tranquility Module of the International Space Station. Mr. Bigelow served as the Program Manager of the B330 Module, Bigelow's main habitation system. Robert Bigelow is an experienced general contractor, designer, developer, financier, buyer and manager of many large real estate projects in the United States. Mr. Bigelow holds exclusive licensing rights to commercialise expendable habitat technology originally conceived but abandoned by NASA in the 1990s. Over the last 17 years, Mr. Bigelow has earned over 20 patents, launched three prototype spacecraft and partnered with NASA on several projects. The company was founded in February 1999. Robert Bigelow founded Bigelow Aerospace to continue work on expandable habitats. The company's mission is to provide safe and low-cost commercial space platforms for low Earth orbit, the moon and beyond. NASA Trans have program cancelled year 2000. NASA is the godfather of expandable habitat technology. Spurred by NASA's mission to explore Mars, NASA initiated the Trans have program to pursue the development of expandable habitat technology. Although the technology showed promise, the program was cancelled due to lack of funding. Headquarters development began in 2001. Bigelow Aerospace sits on over 50 acres in North Las Vegas, Nevada. Bigelow secured license for expandable technology from NASA September 2003. Bigelow Aerospace purchased a patent license from NASA for expandable space habitat technology. For over a decade, the Bigelow team has evolved expandable technology and has enhanced the performance and reliability of the architecture. Genesis 1 launch July 2006. The launch of Genesis 1 at the ISC Cosmotras Space and Missile Complex in Russia marked the first launch for Bigelow Aerospace. The mission successfully validated the expansion, pressurization and safe operation of an expandable spacecraft. Genesis 2 launch June 2007. The launch and operation of the second expandable spacecraft was also a success. Upon the completion of the Genesis program, Bigelow Aerospace began its work on human-rated habitats. Beam launch, April 2016. After a historic launch for Bigelow Aerospace and SpaceX, the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, also known as Beam, became the first expandable module to reach the International Space Station. NASA awards BEAM a mission extension, December 2017. NASA awards BEAM a longer time on the ISS and integrates the module into an operational asset of the station. BEAM is currently holding over 1,000 pounds of cargo, including the weathered LEE, latched end effector. BEAM continues to perform nominally and above the expectations.
The B330 project was an inflatable space habitat being privately developed by Bigelow Aerospace from the 2010 until 2020. The design was evolved from NASA's TransHab habitat concept. The B330 would have had 330 cubic metres or 12,000 cubic feet of internal volume, hence its numeric designation. The craft is intended to support zero-gravity research, including scientific missions and manufacturing processes. Beyond its industrial and scientific purposes, however, it has the potential as a destination for space tourism and a craft for missions destined for the Moon and Mars. Several test articles were built and tested in various conditions in ground test facilities, but no flight versions were built. It is a regrettable situation, as I am sure you will agree, as we move on to the features of this behemoth. Compared to their volume mass ratio, expandable modules offer more living space than traditional rigid modules. For example, the pressurised volume of a 23-tonne B330 module is 330 metres cubed, compared to the 106 metres cubed of the 15-tonne ISS Destiny module. The B330 offers 210% more habitable space, with an increased mass of only 53%. Bigelow Aerospace also claimed that the module provides radiation protection equivalent to, and ballistic protection superior to, the current International Space Station. The exterior of the craft is intended to be 16.88 metres, 55 feet, long by 6.7 metres, 22 feet in diameter, and the module will weigh at least 23,000 kilograms or 50,000 pounds. The habitat is designed to have two solar arrays and two thermal radiator arrays for heat dissipation, as well as life support systems to main a crew of up to six astronauts. It will also have a zero-g toilet with solid and liquid waste collector, semi-private berths for each crew member, exercise equipment, a food storage and preparation station, lighting and a personal hygiene station. The wall thickness would be approximately 0.46 metres or 18 inches when the module is fully expanded. The walls are made up to 24 to 36 layers of ballistic protection, thermal protection, radiation protection and will be as hard as concrete once the craft is fully expanded. The exterior will also feature four large windows coated with a UV protection film. Bigelow Aerospace developed the 330 module to be compatible to main with other spacecraft such as the Russian Soyuz, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, Boeing CST-100 Starliner and the NASA's upcoming Orion spacecraft. The module's large size is particularly beneficial for lunar astronauts or crews of other long-duration space missions which until now have been restricted to fairly cramped quarters for the several-day flight. In early 2010, Bigelow selected Orbitech as a supplier for Environmental Control and Life Support System, or ECLSS. Also February 2010, an initial launch of the B330 was slated to be no earlier than 2015, following a notional launch of a smaller Sundance habitat in 2014. In June 2010, Bigelow announced that the B330 would be the sixth spacecraft component making up the notional Bigelow Commercial Space Station. The Sundance development was later halted, with a decision to move directly from the Genesis series prototypes to the B330. As of November 2013, Bigelow Aerospace indicated that the company had the financial capacity to produce at least two B330 habitats, along with a couple of transit tugs and a docking node if Bigelow is able to secure commercial customers to pay for approximately half of the launch costs for these systems. 
In February 2014, some pricing and other lease details were made public. B330 lease rate will be US 25 million for one third of the station, 110 cubic metres or 3,900 cubic feet. A 60 day lease and a round trip taxi seat to the B330 in low earth orbit, LEO, on a SpaceX Dragon was projected to be US 26.5 million per seat. In April 2016, Bigelow signed an agreement with United Launch Alliance, ULA, to launch the first B330 module in 2020 using an Atlas V rocket. Unfortunately, this story comes to an end as Bigelow Aerospace ceased all work on the B330 in March 2020 as it laid off its entire 88 person workforce. If only something could have come of the aspirations of Robert Bigelow but I don't believe it is too late for the work his company produced to be utilised. My personal favourite utilisation of such tech will be to use the habitats as ready to go for lunar or Mars use, just requiring an ample covering of local regolith for additional protection. But that's it for me, this has been Unhinged Space. I have a Patreon page for anyone who wants to help beyond a like and a subscribe of course. Link will be in the description. None of my videos are complete without a word about Cyclonix, the god emperor of thumbnails. Link to him in the description. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate the views, likes and shares, but especially the comments. I'm happy to answer any of your questions in the section below. Stay safe and sound everybody, and I want to let you know. I'm producing the next episode ready for drop 15th February 2021. An amazing person and his project will be revealed.